welcome to today where I've learned something that is going to change our space program forever. And you might wonder what the hell is this and what does asparagus have to do with it? Yeah, I don't know either. But um, I'm going to show you why our space program is about to get better. Now, we're going to launch this piece of crap and it really is exactly that. It's a piece of crap. And then I'm going to show you how I'm going to turn it into something that's not a piece of crap. So let's launch this thing. And since I already know it flies, I'll come back with you when it's in space. Okay, so we're going to run out of fuel pretty soon. Didn't get very high, you know, here it goes. And this thing is basically crap and uh, not getting me anywhere. Just shooting straight up like this, it'll get me to about 178,000 meters above Kerbin. And... We can do a lot better than that, and I'm about to show you right now how exactly we can do better than that. And that is very simple. We're going to attach these fuel ducts from rocket to rocket, which means that they're going to like drain each other's fuel. And I can detach them bit by bit so I have less weight. Oh, damn it. Ah, let me just load what I already have saved. Right here. I, I still don't know why it's called an asparagus system. It beats me. But it works. Right, I have fuel ducts so that these will run out first. Which means I can ditch them and lose the weight. And then these, these, and this one. So I slowly, you know, decouple them bit by bit as I go up. So I still have that booster power from them to begin with. But, you know, I can ditch the weight way earlier than if I decouple all six at the same time and blah, blah, blah. So let's see how high this one goes. And it'll give you a good idea of how much more efficient this is. It's, it's quite crazy, actually. So let's get this up there. And same deal. Uh, well, I'll actually show this a bit. You can see two run out, so I can ditch those and go nice and fast. Just the other ones, right about now. And this is pretty much how it's going to progress, bit by bit. I have less weight to it while still having extra thrust. And it's a really awesome system, because it should get me way higher than the last test did. Because by now, my middle engine had pretty much run out on the first one, but since it's leaching off of all these other fuel tanks, it lasts a lot longer. And uh, now that you've seen pretty much the asparagus system as it's called, dropping all those engines. Let's um, skip to how high this one gets using that system. Okay, so we're about to run out of fuel again right about now. And uh, you know, this thing is not gonna go anywhere. It was just to show you something. Last time we got 170,000 meters, was it? Now we have 13 million. So, you know, that's that's a lot better and a lot more efficient as you can tell. So that's something we're really going to be abusing a lot to get around and, uh, you know, it'll get us to fancy places like Minmus, provided we spam more fuel tanks. But first of all, we haven't even landed on the moon yet and that's definitely something I want to actually achieve. So I'm going to start a completely clean space program so all this, like, debris and stuff is, isn't here anymore and all my failure states are no longer there. We're going to start from scratch. Okay, so here we have the first attempt of our new program. Pretty much a giant version of what we just did. Will hopefully allow us to travel and land on the moon. This little thing on top is pretty much what I want to land there. Very, very maybe get back to Kerbin, but I doubt it. I'll have to see how this handles first. I've got some RCS, which I've never actually played with before. So that's going to be interesting. Apparently it's important. So... Let's get to launching it. I really don't know what to expect from this thing, but oh, it's already wobbling like hell, so it's probably not going to go anywhere. Wow. <laughs> Look at that. Yeah, that's very, very wobbly and unstable. It's losing a lot of efficiency probably, but let's see if it goes anywhere. It's uh, interesting to say the least. Maybe it'll work perfectly. We're overheating a bit, so I'm going to... Lose a bit of speed. It's only the center engine, though, so we should be fine. 
Now all of these engines at the bottom are vectoring engines, so they're going to consume fuel a lot less quickly. I don't know if that's a good idea, but you know, experimentation, experimentation. It's going to be worth it in the end. Seems the center tank is actually running out quite quickly regardless of the fuel ducts I put in between. So that's not so great. I'll have to find a solution to that one. First set of tanks should be ready to drop quite soon. Now I just hope I set up the stages right. Because, you know, it's another thing I mess up plenty. And we're actually gonna, at 13,000 meters, I'm gonna try and turn the ship already. See how that goes. Maybe I'll wait until I can drop my first engine so I don't have to drop them within a turn. That'd be quite crappy. But this thing seems to be too unstable to... Yeah, actually pull this off, I think. But let's see what we can do. So this will already sort of start our orbit around the Kerbin. Center engine ran out. That's very crappy. Means the system isn't set up properly because this is now dead weight. Let's see how our. Oh, that doesn't look good at all. I want this to get to about at least 70k so we don't drop back down. Should be letting go of the next engines quite soon. And let's just hope, you know, they don't bump into the rest of the ship. It's expanding quite nicely, but I think I want to pitch it up a bit more, like this. It doesn't seem to be making a hell of a difference. It's a test run of the ship. I'm surprised it even got up there. I expected it to wobble to death and then to have to duct tape like everything stuck to each other like mad, but it's uh, doing quite nicely even without the engineering. Well, I mean, how much engineering is there to duct tape, but whatever. Um, it's not doing what I expected it to do, though. I'm not quite so glad with the apoapsis height. Uh, chances are we're just going to run out of fuel before we actually get into an orbit at all. So I fuck this one up quite royally. Yeah, I'm just not going up at all. This is bad. We pretty much wasted this entire rocket. Oh, whoa. That was close. Doesn't seem that we're going to get what we want from this run. So I'm going to start over and I'll just shoot it straight again. It seemed to work better. Well, let's just see where these fuel tanks get us. Still 40k. If it's lower than 70, I'm going to drop down back to Earth without ever making it into an orbit. But the system works quite nicely. Maybe not so much for a launch like this. Maybe you should stick to a straight launch. I'm not quite sure yet. These things are lasting a really long time. Whoa. Are they bugged? Oh, wow. It still has two to go. Holy crap. Oh, this will be fine then. Jesus. It's gonna be slow, but it'll be fine. Let's fast forward. Look at that. That's beautiful. How's our fuel? Yeah, it's... Holy crap. <laughs> that doesn't look so good. Um, Stop. 80k is enough. Wow. That means I still have this entire thing left. We're going to fly towards the apoapsis. Um, don't fast forward anymore. Because we want to turn to the prograde. Over here. I don't seem to be able to unless I have some thrust. I could use that RCS now, I suppose. But, um... Let's not yet. I mean, I should have ditched these tanks by now. So I guess this is more efficient than it... Than I thought it would be. I mean... Oh god, oh god, you're going too far. You're going too far. Now you're decreasing my fucking apoapsis. There, the RCS really helps, okay. 
SAS module back on, RCS off, full thrust. Let's get this orbit. Maybe we can do it on these fuel tanks, that would be amazing. Yeah, I'm not a fan of the vectoring engines though. Um, I definitely shouldn't have vectoring engines for a launch. That's space stuff or moon landing stuff right there. So I guess, you know, lesson learned. It was a bad idea, I think. Look at how slow that's going though. That's really, really nice. It's not breaking records, but it feels so good. Just to have so much fuel left here. It's crazy. Right, so we're about to create our periapsis. Right there. And it gets to about 18k. We're gonna call this off right now. That's fine. 77 is fine. It's 139. That's not very circular, but it'll do for what we want to do. I'm just still left in these. Damn. Still more than half right there. It's crazy. All right, so another thing I learned is that I can pretty much instantly plan a maneuver that should accurately wait. Let's set a target. Oh, oh what did I do? I broke it. I broke it. I want you gone. Target. Target. Oh my god, I'm breaking everything. Something about this isn't right. For some reason it won't let me set any maneuvers or a target. Oh, because I wasn't focused on the ship anymore. Let me go fix this real quick. Okay, so I just went back to the space center and it fixed it fairly easily. I should be able to place a maneuver on the horizon here. Actually, what's my... Yeah, that's fine. It's not even one. I should be able to find a... A MUN encounter right here without see without having to alter anything the problem is though what I haven't learned yet like right now there's this little squiggly line which is good that means I'm not flying straight into the MUN and not just crashing into it at full speed which makes it a lot harder to you know to actually land um, but yeah we have so much fuel left so that's magnificent that's fast forward this we also have all that rcs which we're not really gonna need really um actually i might be able to use some of it to find my target right here stop fast forwarding for a bit turn that rcs on and that should yeah that should be helping me right now where is our little blue targety thing there it is. So that's the burn we've got to do. Wow, I still don't have a whole lot of control over this thing. Like, it's so big and crappy, but the fuel is great. Stick that right there. Continue fast forwarding. Hopefully we'll sort of stick to it. So we can do our burn right as we get here. The RCS can go off, by the way. We won't need that anymore. And just a little second more. Let's burn this thing. Is that in there? I need to pay attention because these tanks could run out quite soon. And at that point... Okay, periapsis is going up so we don't have to worry about that. These run out, however. We definitely want to worry about that. I cannot warp faster when it's throttled up yet. It's, I hate that. I think there's a way to override that block. Oh, I'll need to go Google that or look at the control menus. I really hope dropping these goes right. Because it's in space. And oh. Oh, right. That was empty as well. Oh, wow, that went downhill quickly, so this is all we have left now. But let's see uh, how far that gets us. Technically, it should still be enough to at least land. I don't know about going back, but... Let's push it a little more. There we go. 
Alright, it's actually kind of off. Yeah, the blue thing went away. So this might not be as great an encounter as I wanted. Let's uh, remove this maneuver so we can see what happened. Yeah, I don't think I have the squiggly now. Um, if I don't crash straight into the mun, that would suck. I think I fucked up again. I seem to do that quite often, but, uh, you know, the more we fail, the more we learn. I'm going to start new space programs until I get a mun encounter on my first go, or a mun landing on my first go, because I want to be able to nail this. I kind of think I'm going to shoot into it with a straight line and totally die, though. There's no way I'm going to be able to have enough thrusting power with this engine to yeah, survive a straight blast into that place. <laughs> well, okay, we fucked up. I fast forwarded and now I'm moving away from the mun and we're going to escape from it. Unless maybe we can burn really hard this way and get lucky, I don't know. I doubt that'll work. We're still gonna crash straight into it though, so it wouldn't really matter to be honest. I screwed it up again. Delightful. I'm never gonna learn this game, I hate this game. Oh, oh god. Uh, stop. Yeah, this is bad. Um, get rid of that maneuver. Since I'm near the apoapsis, I should be able to create an orbit, right? I hope I'll be able to create an orbit. Yeah, but that's expanding as well. I'm already falling down, though. Am I? Am I stuck here? What's going on? Well, we're getting closer to the apoapsis, at which point it'll be easier to create a larger... I'm not sure what I'm doing right now, to be honest. Assess modules, stop that. If I could create an orbit, that'd be great, but... Nice! Awesome! <laughs> okay, we're actually in a mun orbit, so that's something. Um... No. Let me, since I'm in a safe orbit, let me see here. Yeah, that's my fastest point. So I want to close in the apoapsis on the mun, but I'm not sure. Who? Because this is where I have the least speed from what I understand. I'm going to puzzle this out. Okay, so I've thought of something that I think is going to pretty much... Fuck this entire flight over, but, you know, for learning's sake, I have to give it a go. So we're gonna go to the periapsis and burn retro, or, yeah, retrograde. The other one is prograde. And hopefully that'll decrease our apoapsis? I think it's just gonna crash me into the mun. <laughs> I'm really not so sure what it's gonna do. But, uh, I mean... We failed so much already, like, what's a little bit more failure, honestly. I um, have to be kind of careful, because this is moving away from me. Okay, let's stop there. Sense module, help me out there. Trim, trim, trim. Use that alt key. All right, there we go. So hopefully this plan works. I'm gonna stop it here for a bit and get back to my periapsis. And do the same thing again. Maybe I am learning, I don't know. We still might be making a horrible mistake. I have no idea. Nice, apoapsis. Go down. I don't know how many meters from the mun I'll... Oh. Crap! I'm still crashing into it with my periapsis. I want to crash into it with my apoapsis, damn it. I'm pretty sure this is going to drag me into the mun. 
whatever, I don't fucking care anymore. Um, do I, Yes, I do. I want to be at least certain that I crash into it. Oh, wait. If I can get it straight from here, I might be landing from... No, it'd still be landing... I can't land via the periapsis. I'd have to turn the other fucking way, right? I don't know anymore. I'm too stupid for this game. Why am I still playing it? I don't get this crap. Let's keep burning. Let's just get this over with and see how nice and straight we can land. Like the straighter, the easier, I suppose. I'm gonna do this slowly because I don't know how fast it's gonna freak out. Usually freaks out pretty fast. Right, so there's no doubt that right now we're landing. Unfortunately, on the dark side of the moon, but we have lights. So, you know, in that regard, we should be okay. Let's um, turn prograde. Hopefully, that doesn't seem right. Let's turn retrograde. <laughs> uh, that was pointing right towards the moon. Um, so I'm not dropping very fast. But I feel secure knowing that this is the speed I'm dropping at. I'm gonna just... Yeah. Cuts. The in-between parts out of this. So we'll keep recording. But I'm not gonna put all this in there. Because probably spend ages trying to properly land. Well, I guess it doesn't matter, because we're going to crash into the mud no matter what I do, seeing as this is all the fuel we have left. So somehow, with all that, all that fuel, and everything looking so promising, we're not going to be able to land this thing, because there's, there's no fuel left. I... No idea how I managed to pull that off. I guess I should have had a bigger fuel tank on this. I messed up a lot. I don't know. I don't... I'm starting to lose hope that I'll ever land on the moon, to be honest. Like, we had this whole freaking asparagus contraption. I still don't know why it's named asparagus. Like, what the hell? And, uh, yeah, it didn't, it didn't do much for us, so... I guess it's just time to crash into the moon, because the fuel we have here is really not going to do anything. I mean, look how fast that runs out. We might as well just shoot it all up. It's not going to do anything. See? So, we're fucked. Maybe Jebediah can survive. I don't know. Probably not. Let's just crash him in there. Like, there's no way he can survive. Maybe he can jump out and sort of jetpack, jetpack down or something. Here. Get out of there. Let go. You're falling. No, let go! Oh god, how do I do the par- Oh, there it is. Oh god! Burn your jetpack fuel! Burn it, burn it! No, he's not gonna make it. He's gonna splat. <laughs> Goodbye. You're dead. Thanks, Jebediah. <laughs> well, that sucks. Okay, then.